All right, welcome to another edition of Talking Giants YouTube. Uh, this is a special edition, free agent edition. We got a couple new guys coming to the team, so Bobby and I decided to jump back on like we've been doing for the draft and go over some of our guys. Uh, today we were going to do Blake Martinez, and uh, he's number 50 inside linebacker, so you'll see him in the middle of the field during our clips. We'll try to point him out, but uh, use your eyes a little bit. Uh, Bobby, he's got uh, – pretty decent resume in terms of a middle linebacker with three plus seasons over 140 tackles uh, more relevant to me is he's got three seasons of over 90 solo tackles uh, plenty of tackles for loss looks like he does get busy in the uh, the pass rush games you know it's not his absolute forte but um, you know in general a pretty decent and sound linebacker yeah with de with kind of any defense now, because of so much of a, a passing league, it's hard to judge these guys off stats. So, you know, originally the the thought is, oh, this guy, the tackle numbers are inflated. Alec Ogletree got tackled. But that's not the case. Like, he earns these tackles. He is a really good run defender. We're going to talk about his pass defense. Um, there is issues, but I don't think it's, like, freak-out-worthy issues. Um and we'll show like why the advanced stats aren't the easiest thing to trust when it comes to pass defense with linebackers. It's you know with corners they've kind of figured out, but with with linebackers it's a lot harder. But yeah, I think he's a, a good football player. Is he going to wow you and and make you jump through the roof like a Luke Keekley? No, but for three years, thirty million dollars, I think he's a good player. Yeah, and I think this is this is value. It's need. Uh, it's not the craziest contract in the world, but uh, we're going to go through these plays. So we'll start with the pass rush. Initially, uh, you'll see him pass rush from the middle a lot. Um, he does this in the run game. He does it in the pass game. These are back-to-back -back plays. This is him on a stunt, um, totally freeing up his other defensive lineman who doesn't quite loop yeah, around. Yeah, Zadarius, I mean, it was his first game as a Packer, but it's like, man, you got to easily loop around for a sack or a batted pass or something. Yeah. The reason why I like this one is just because it shows he's he's gritty. He's going to get in there. It's not he's not afraid of activity uh, whatsoever. Uh, here's another pass rush. You see, he loves the blitz up the middle, defeats the running back, and makes the play. Yeah, he's not going to give you like some like he doesn't have like a a repertoire of pass rush moves. But like you said, like he can get in, he could bang. Uh, like you said, be gritty and make some plays in the in the as a blitzer. He's not like some amazing blitzer, but he's you know he does. It. A decent enough job. Here's a nice run play. Uh, I really one of the reasons I pointed this out was because if if just pay attention to his eyes, watch how he feels where the running back's going to cut, and he finds the right spot. Yeah, he There's for the, the most hole. part he plays patient, but I mean we'll see in some plays where he plays a little too aggressive. Um, this is one play I remarked because it's the first time he really shot the gap that I saw. And, you know, went for the aggressive play uh, versus kind of stretching it out wide. Really, yeah, he makes that play, but the right read would have been to flow outside. And then here's one where he's a little more patient. You can talk through this one, Bobby. Right. Okay. So instead of just going all out and then allowing for, you know, a cutback or, or him to bounce it, he feels, he feels uh, waiting on him and he puts that, that right arm out and benches him and just kind of waits in the hole and waits for Zeke to come to him. Here's him against the Vikings. This is an outside zone. We've had a lot of trouble with outside zone. I was. This was the first game I watched, so it kind of could be downhill for him here. But I was – because I was like, okay, they played week two uh, against a team that ran a lot of play action, that outside zone that killed the Giants. And it's just like the Vikings did that really well. And I thought he played awesome in this game. And this play right here with Cook, he did five or six times where he just went – he found that hole and he filled it and he stopped Dalvin Cook from getting a five, six yard gain and kept it to three yards or less. And then you get to where he cheats a little bit. Right. So this, this one gets some trouble. Um, like you said, this is, this is kind of the wrong thing to do, but this is where I'm a little okay with making the wrong decision, being a little aggressive because he sees – uh, between 72 and 52, he sees that closing up. And I think, he, like you said, he cheats and he takes a chance that he's going to cut back where the right thing would have been to do was just play right behind that defensive tackle and wait for Reed. So while this does lead to a 15-yard gain, I don't hate him cheating on this play. Uh, this is a, a another similar situation where he just kind of cheats a little bit, 
to go to the hole and a little more patience. Actually, the thing that people criticize him about is probably the right, the right thing here because when this play gets going, there's going to be a huge hole. And Blake yeah. fills it. And, this, and the last one, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm cool with that. Not cool with this one. Amos has that gap. You either played patient or you hit your gap responsibility, which would have been um, uh, the B gap outside of the guard. Yep. And he just plays it inside, and he just makes it extremely easy. Oh, here it is, Bobby. Okay, so this is one I, I really wanted to talk about because it's a 75-yard touchdown run, and <laughs> it's off of him. It's, it's off of Martinez. So, and he could have played this a little better, but I, I want to watch it. So, everybody on the offensive line does a good job. Fullback does a good job. So, he's playing. He's squ- he was square with them, and he plays it a little out- outside. But, honestly, there's not – like, I don't – even if he plays this perfectly, there's really nothing he could do. I mean, look at that. That is a run- running back's dream that you get. Pick, pick a lane. Pick a lane. <laughs> offensive lineman, whichever way you go, I'm going so the other way. Room. So as much as like, oh, look, he just gave up a 75-yard touchdown run, there's not much he can do on that. That's an excellent play. Context matters, Bobby, God forbid. <laughs> Here's another one. I felt personally his read was slow. You so, can't let a guard who is your bait you're almost lined up on get, seal you like that. And you got to at least be taking him on square. He And the guard actually steps – to meet him even, and then he <laughs> turns him. Yeah. Um, it's fine. But then you see him do it the right way where he's got patience. And this one's a really good one. Tight end motions across the screen. Tight end's going to come in as the lead blocker. He's coming in right on Martinez. Now, the D-line does a great job of causing some havoc. Um, but this is, this is team football. He still breaks tackles, and then he's right there. I mean, that's, that's his gap. But anyway, all right, we're going to get moving on past defense. Uh, up and down, same thing. We're going to start with a screen play against the Cowboys. Just watch how he flows here. See, he didn't recognize the screen super quick. It looks like he ran his regular drop into his hook, but then he came up real nice. Here's, a, here's another one, week one. He gets outside of the frame of the screen, which is so nice. He starts on the inside of this one, Bobby. Gets himself outside and then stays outside. Yeah. And it's, I like when he's in that like, gap. I think when he's actually put in man coverage on a running back, I think he does pretty good for the yes. most part. Yeah, I actually am not as worried in man. It's zone. It's actually zone. And so we're going to go through that a little bit here. But so now in pass coverage, he shifts over. This is zone. And it's dropped right over his head. So this was the play I wanted to go over, Bobby, because, um, you know, he's got the running back if that running back goes out in the flat. And if that running back goes vertical and cuts it up field, he's going to have to go. So it is a full speed sprint. And Martinez has not opened his hips yet. He's still looking at the quarterback. And so now Trubisky is a real easy throw. He just kind of drops it over his head in between them and so he can get that depth that's fine just turn your hips and run with the running back you know so to me the one thing I saw a really bad habit is just he he uses the quarterback for his tell focus on the routes and you'll see a couple more where just the routes can tell you what's happening and follow that through uh, here's a great example of a good one he gets nice and deep and passes off Cooper and has excellent coverage yeah he collapses on it and I was saying to you before I kind of wish that the corner doesn't make this play because this would have been one of the ones on his highlight tape. I mean, he might even intercept it. Like you said, he sees it and he goes. And we saw that too many times with the Giants, with Ogletree, whoever it was. And we'll see it with Martinez. He does it too. Yeah. But it seemed like we never had this play where it's like, okay, this guy's running a crosser. I get that I might have the underneath, but I'm going to follow this guy and stop them from getting a 20-yard gain. This one is really fun to watch because if you guys think there's any linebacker in the NFL that can actually cover this, um, you're probably dead wrong. And that's why it's the advanced stats. So, I mean, let's see. This goes for what? It's like 60 or 20, 70. 30, <laughs> 40, 50 yards. And it, like you said, there's just not a – Isaiah Simmons isn't making this play. Nope. There's drag route and 12, who I don't even know who he is. I mean, he just sits on it perfectly. I mean, you – that's how you, like, when you're training against air, that's how you sit on a route. He sits on that route, and 
like you said, that's 50, 60 yards accredited to him. But like you said, Isaiah Simmons is not making that play. No. So here's a good example where it's zone till it's man. Uh, Blake has looks like that's Ertz going for the flat. He starts to head towards him, but he immediately has number two coming in his face. And he needs to plan his feet and come inside. He just lets Jeffrey come right inside of him. And so, yeah. you know, this is an example where he makes the step up because it's his own read, but every lineman is pass blocking. So trust your read. Your, your read says it's a pass, drop. And uh, if he's in his hook zone here, it could be a pick if yeah. he reads it the right way. And so, and on, a, on a side note, like you said, look, they're all pass sets. So, like, and I don't know what the Green Bay defensive coordinator is telling you, but you're supposed to read your guards, not, not the QB <laughs> on that initial handoff. So he shouldn't be um, biting in on that. But on a side note, I can't stand – on the RPO, I wish the backside guy would not bite anymore. I know. Especially when you're playing a team like the, the Eagles, um, the Bears, who, you know, come from that Chiefs RPO system. I just wish because those QBs, they do not want to hand the ball off. Almost every time they're holding on just – they want to throw that easy slant. So just on a side note, I wish backside – Side note, this is exactly what Bobby was talking about. Yes, exactly. (laughs) So, Blake Martinez is the backside backer here, and it is an RPO to the other way. Both backers come up. Quarterback reads it really well. Backside backer is totally screwed. That's just Tariq Cohen in the background. He he reads his keys correctly, too, on there. Okay, this one, this is a little technique head. Uh, he He is over here line up against the slot. So he's out wide a little bit more. I thought this was interesting, and that's why I wanted to pull this one. Um, normally he's inside a little bit more, and he's got to get out to the hook zone. But you see how he, he continues to backpedal. Are his eyes anywhere on that receiver, Bobby? No. From what so it looks like he's all on the backfield. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm seeing. And so, like, hey, man, your, your eyes are in the backfield, but number two is coming your way right now. And if he sees that and he knows that guy's coming in, he could come, he could rally up on it right now. And at the very least, stop a first down, but he sort of just accepts the completion. It's just a great example of like it's zone until it's a man. Boom. Right. I know. And that <laughs> that's something we didn't see at all last year with the Giants. Yeah. So uh final play. Uh thank you guys for hanging on. So uh Martin is in the middle of the field. I, I really liked that drop at Dallas where he got deep. Uh and there's nothing but benefit here. So You've got, you've got a guy underneath, but he, sometimes that vertical between the hashes, that's really up to the middle linebacker, you know, in some of those zones to get some depth. He splits it really nicely and then makes, makes the interception. And uh, he looks really comfortable catching it, so, like, I have no problem with him. You know, if he gets interception opportunities, he's not going to be all stone hands. He looks, looks pretty comfortable with the ball. Uh, yeah. The B.J. Goodson ain't doing that. <laughs> so, so that was that was it. That was as as quick of a summary as Bobby and I could probably give you on uh, Blake Martinez. He is a very good football player. He's a good run stopper. He's not perfect. Uh, we were trying to show a little bit of the uh, both sides of sort of his game. Um, we are not. This is not Ray Lewis, and we're not paying for Ray Lewis to come to the New York Giants. He is a a solid football player who understands flow, gets everybody lined up in the right positions. And, and plays the game pretty smart. Um, I think some of his bad tendencies in pass defense can actually be fixed. And some people say he had Patrick Graham before. Maybe that'll help him again in the future uh, because he had one of his better pass coverage years uh, when he had him. Um, and so, yeah, I think he's I think he's a good football player, Bobby. Um, what yeah, are your final it's, thoughts? It's, um, you know, usually the right take isn't a hot take. Is he the best? Is he going to – come in and just transform the defense no is he better than anything we've had in the last few years yes is he a good football player yes does he have weaknesses yes um and that's what his contract shows three years 30 million that's what his contract shows is that he's a good football player who has flaws but i will say watching him the the line that tackles uh, are deceiving and they're inflated is flat out not true his tackle numbers are not uh, inflated he earns those and they're solo tackles because I, I remember there was a there's a video and I only watched the first couple of minutes of it because I just didn't respect the guy's voice um, <laughs> uh, talking about how he's overrated and he brought up like oh you know tackles don't matter because sometimes I saw that did. 
And I was like, but he leads the league in solo tackles. So he's not just coming and putting a hand on a guy yeah. for an assisted tackle. So he earns his tackles. He's a good player. And I'm excited to watch him. Um, I'm not excited to when he does screw up in coverage, and I'm freaking out on him on a Tuesday watching film. But, <laughs> hey, that's that's New York Giants football. Yeah, we have good compliments, though. Uh, didn't go into some of the formational stuff. So there, they sometimes they brought safeties up to help anytime they were in heavy pass sets, and they kept him focused inside on the backs, on the tight end. So if he if he gets put in a position where he can focus on his strengths, which is being an excellent quarterback of the defense, really, really good in run, and smart zone play when, you know, when he actually uh, hunkers down. I think we, we're going to have a really good football player in our hand. He'll be super, uh, super big asset. This is a major upgrade over Alec Ogletree. So, yeah, big time, big time. Um, yeah. Wise man once said, don't put round holes in the square peg. So <laughs> don't, uh, don't expect him to be a, a, a third safety. No. And um, if you have any questions on his snap count, he pretty much played 100% of the snaps like almost every game. He's on the field. So yeah. that's the kind of guy we want. And uh, that's it for uh, Talking Giants film review. Thanks for joining, Bobby. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll have more soon. Go Giants. See you.